By a show of hands, how many people here have heard of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease? Wow, almost every hand is up, which isn't really surprising because these are the two most common brain diseases in the world. My great-grandmother had Alzheimer's disease and the impact that it had on our family with her not remembering if she ate breakfast or being able to locate her keys. The impact that it had on her tremendously motivated me and inspired me to study brain diseases. So a lot of people have preconceived notions about Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. For instance, when you think of Alzheimer's, most people associate that with a memory problem disorder. And some people associate Parkinson's disease as a movement disorder. And while these statements are true, they don't give you the full picture. In fact, these diseases actually share a lot in common. Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease are actually primarily affecting people over the age of 65. And as shown by this pie chart here, they're actually the leading causes of dementia, which is a clinical term for memory loss in patients. If you were to take a snapshot into the brain of a person that either had Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, you'd notice some similarities there as well. Shown by these highly technical lightning marks, you could see that the brain areas that are affected are very common at late stages of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. At the molecular level, you'd actually notice that there's an accumulation of this particular protein, alpha-synuclein, or alpha-syn for short. We know a lot about what alpha-syn is doing in Parkinson's disease. When it accumulates there, it causes massive destruction in cells. But we don't really understand what it's doing in Alzheimer's disease. And so my thesis project was to investigate the role of alpha-syn in the context of Alzheimer's disease. And to do this, we actually take a novel approach. We designed genetically modified Alzheimer's mice. And these mice have many of the same features that a person with Alzheimer's disease may display. For instance, these mice will have trouble forming new memories. They'll have trouble learning new tasks as a consequence of not being able to form those memories. So we took these Alzheimer's mice, and we either increased the amount of alpha syn they had or completely removed it. And the results we got were striking. By increasing the amount of alpha syn that these mice had, we actually saw that there was an increase in toxic proteins that are linked to Alzheimer's disease that you actually find in the human brain. We also saw that there were fewer synaptic connections between the neurons, which is indicative of them having problems with memory. By contrast, when we genetically removed alpha-synuclein, we actually saw much, much, much more improvements there. As a matter of fact, these mice were almost identical to normal mice. They had fewer of those toxic proteins, their synaptic connections were intact, and we also saw that many of the other features that are indicative of Alzheimer's disease in these mice were also removed. And we think that by taking this approach, we have identified a very important role for alpha syn in the context of Alzheimer's disease, and we've also shown that this may have some implications for Parkinson's disease. In the future, what we're hoping to do is look for other similarities between these diseases so that we can come one day closer to combating them. Thanks for listening.